Hello, everybody, and welcome to Party Chat, our Patreon exclusive Q&A for everybody at that MinMax Council tier. My name is Ben Hansen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting MinMax. This is a, a hot scoop of an episode because we're joined by outgoing slash former Game Informer editor Kimberly Wallace. Hello. Kim, I want to know about um, that Nomura interview that was your big uh, send-off, your final interview, I yes. believe, with Game Informer was the one that made headlines and went around the world, um, got everything trending involving Nomura and Kingdom Hearts and all that stuff, because there's the interview where he said that he was the one that was res resistant to putting Sora in Smash, not Disney, yes. which is <laughs> infuriating. Um, <laughs> but then the also thing is, you know, you asked him about why aren't there Final Fantasy characters, and he just said, because there's too many characters already in the game. Well, and he has said the series has never been about that. And I was like, dude, come uh, on. Like, yeah. He's like, yeah, he's like a lot of fans misinterpret that this. And I, I get it. It's gotten away from the crossover between Final Fantasy and um, Disney. But that was how they marketed in the beginning to get people interested, I think, on the gaming side. And so it's like to try to deny that that was a big part of the series and that people really looked forward to that each game. I'm like... Oh, God. And I knew as soon as he answered, but I was like, well, that's what you said. <laughs> it's bananas. How did you land that interview? Was that a well one for the magazine that you pulled online or what was oh, the process? So there? here's what there's actually a huge story behind this. And this is the first time I'm ever telling it. So I'm giving you the exclusive <laughs> here. Scoop. Um, so originally I was invited out to go to the Kingdom Hearts celebration for the 20 years in Tokyo. Uh, I was in Shibuya, actually, okay. proper. Um and it was like, you know, it's still Japanese, Japan's uh, restrictions are still very high. And so business travel is allowed, but you have to go through like all these hurdles. And so we were trying to get everything approved because like they didn't decide on this till like a week before, like everything had to be in yeah. for, you know, customs and everything. And also, like, the higher-ups were all at GDC at the time, who had mm. to make approvals on things. It was just a mess. And so, like, I went and I got all my... I got the new passport photo. Like, you have to take your passport, a new passport photo, essentially, and send it to them and all this other stuff. And I was even on the fence. I'm like, should I be going? I'm going to be taking this trip alone. Um, international travel. Uh, but I knew Japan's, you know... They're one of the safest um, places that you can go yeah. because of how strict they are. So, but I was like, I'm going to regret it. It's 20, my favorite, like one of my favorite series, 20 years celebration. Like, I'm going to regret it if I don't go. Anyways, the day before we didn't get one approval that we needed and the whole trip fell apart. And so I was planning a retrospective for the magazine, which still happened, but without that interview. Mm. So my questions didn't come through in time. And I was just like, I was so bummed. And I thought like everything had fallen apart with it. And then I just a few weeks later get this email from Square and it's like, okay, Nomura wants to talk to you on Zoom. And it's in like three days and they gave me a time and they're like, does this work? And I was like, well, I guess I guess it like you don't turn down a Nomura interview. <laughs> um, but the issue had already shipped. So there is no way the questions could be done. Right. And so I sat down with him and I always say he's one of my most difficult interviews because you just never know what type of mood you're going to catch him in. Um, and sometimes he's very, like I said, he won't give you a lot to go off of. And other times he'll just like tease and spill all the tea and, and it's great. Um, and so I got him on a day where he was just very verbose and willing to talk about a lot of different things. Um, so we had about an hour conversation, I think, which like with translations, think of that as like 30 minutes or so. And it's like you're trying to ask everything that you possibly can but you're also limited by depending on how long he, he responds to certain questions or what goes on and i could knew i couldn't go and approach that interview and just like right away be like bang 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 kingdom hearts sure. like four like i can't go in like that so i had to like ease into the stuff and um yeah it ended up being so like because it couldn't make it to the magazine i was like all right i'm gonna post this online and it lined up really well with when I was leaving Game Informer. So yeah. I was like, this is going to be my last hurrah. And then to see Kingdom Hearts, Sora and Nomura trending on Twitter was just like, because of that interview was amazing. 
And the Kingdom Hearts fans, I'll give them this. They are so kind and appreciative for any information that they can get that they are the nicest fan base, I think. And you would, like, a lot of people wouldn't expect that because of how passionate they are. Like, I think they'd be really critical, but they are just so appreciative. And I always appreciated the kind words um, that they would, they'd just be so thankful that you even got the information that you did out of him. What else uh, stood out to you about that interview in terms of, I don't know, teases or insight into Nomura and Kingdom Hearts or Kingdom Hearts 4? I think having kind of some insight that it's gonna, there's gonna be Disney worlds, but I think a lot less. And I think he basically said that I think Final Fantasy characters are kind of like, not he's he doesn't want to keep bringing final fantasy characters in and i think but i think he knows the pressure because everybody wants it yeah um and then also that being like a hub world um that we saw quadratum yeah um, like and you're gonna see sora's day-to-day life and him going in and out of it um I thought that was interesting because he's like, you will spend a lot of time because I'm like, how much are we going to be in this real world? And then also what the real world kind of offers them to do. Um, and I think Namor is doing that on purpose because every time I talk to him, you can sense this tension and frustration over how much needs to be approved by Disney. And I actually asked him, God, years ago at E3, I was like, how do you create this story? And then like, because the approvals are essentially still going on as they're making the game. And I was like, you don't know what worlds are going to be in. Like how do you approach this? And he's like, I write everything around it. And then as the worlds get approved, I put things. So that, that explains to me why there is some disconnect. And also it really depends on what did like he can get with Disney and Disney wants him usually to stick to the movie plots. But he said, Pixar were the ones who came to him and they're like, we want original stories told through these worlds. Yeah. That's and awesome. That was really cool. But yeah, just knowing that I'm like, that process just must be so stressful of not knowing where the care and knowing that you have to insert some story stuff into the world. So, but you're writing essentially around, like, it just sounds like such a complicated thing that I'm like, I'm glad kingdom hearts exists. And I think there's a lot that goes into it. That is a, a lot of work. Um, the, which is why I'm, I'm surprised it exists to be honest. Yeah. Well now it'll only get tougher if it, Looks like they're incorporating Star Wars in the Kingdom Hearts 4 for like the approval process. Like, okay, now get Lucasfilm. I to wonder sign if Nomura did that to like make them be like, all right, now people are expecting Star Wars. You have to give me Star Wars. <laughs> you never know, right? Like that God, could totally be because he's, he's smart like that. Like at the end of <laughs> the first Kingdom Hearts, he didn't know if the series was going to go on, but he put in a little tease like it was just to see how fans would respond. And right. Yeah. He's he's I I wouldn't be surprised, but yeah. Um, All right. Well, hey, uh, thank you all for joining us for Party Chat. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for jumping up and asking questions and supporting the format. Uh, Kim, thank you for being here. Yeah, Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Like, I had a blast. Oh, good, good, good. Um, Anything else you want to say? Anything we didn't touch on that you want to cover? Uh, No, basically just a thank you to everybody the past decade who, you know, read my work and you know i always loved having that legion of jrpg fans we (laughs) stick together and it always feels really good when i would hear from you all and and know that you guys you guys got me you appreciated me (laughs) so i just want to say thank you to everybody because um it was fun to share that with everyone it really was This was a clip from Party Chat, our Patreon-exclusive podcast that airs every single Monday. The podcast features cohorts and friends of the show, contributors, talking directly to the MinMax community. So if you're looking for even more podcasts from MinMax, this is the place to go. Just head to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's, support us at the $5 tier, and you can listen to Party Chat every single week. Thanks so much, everybody. We appreciate it.